Okay, welcome back. Now, since we defined a site, and that's really what you should do no matter what site you're building, Dreamweaver will keep, keep track of many different websites for you and your client. So as it exists, you can have an entire grocery list of different sites you're working on right there. So Dreamweaver is a great tool for that. Now, it's very interesting. I have a lot of students that come to me that have been working in Dreamweaver for years, and they don't use Dreamweaver to FTP, which is a huge mistake, because Dreamweaver will keep track of all your files for you. You don't have to use a program like Transmit or Fetch or WS Pro. Dreamweaver will do that for you, and that's basically included in this particular course. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here, of course, is make ourselves a new file. Based on these choices, anything about a file, of course, is under the File menu, so File New. Now, I'm working on Macintosh, but Windows is the same thing. Macintosh uses the Command key, Windows uses the Control key. So Command N New makes a new file. Then, again, software is based on choices. So based on these choices, we're going to create ourselves a new HTML5 page. Now. At this point, since this is now the year 2013, you should all be creating HTML5 compliant pages because they're better for search engine purposes and they're better for working with multiple devices like smartphones and tablets and desktops. So you should definitely be building HTML5 documents. Now, what I'd like to share with you is rather than have to basically select that because by default, Dreamweaver does not select an HTML5 document. Dreamweaver by default selects this option right here. So rather than reinvent the wheel and have to select it every 10 seconds every time you make a new website, if you go to your preferences based on these choices, here's my category choices, we're going to select new document. We're going to say every time we make a new document, go ahead and make it an HTML5 document. Simple, simple. So therefore, if I go to file new again, you'll see that it automatically defaults to an HTML5 document. And that's what we want to see. Hitting the return key, anytime you see a highlighted button, regardless of the software, whether it's Illustrator, Photoshop, Work Express, etc., etc., you can activate that highlighted button by simply hitting the return key on your keyboard. Okay. Now, this particular window I don't want to see right now. It's really not important for us. So based on these choices, how would I close any of my floating palette windows? Well, there's nothing up here that says floating palette, but there is something that says window. And based on these choices, files, which is command shift F for files, Macintosh control shift F for windows. And that's just going to close that file. So the first thing we want to do, I want to share the same exact techniques that I do to build six-figure websites. Yes, I did say six-figure websites. Okay, I'm going to share with you how to do it the right way, how to let the software work for you, and take it one step at a time. I assume you know diddly nothing about this software. The only thing I do uh, assume that you know is to use your mouse keyboards and to copy and paste. Other than that, everything else I will help you with every step of the way. So we're going to go to the file menu because anything about a file is under the file menu. File save, file print, file import, file open, file close, et cetera, et cetera. That's how software thinks. My objective is to get you to think the way the software thinks. And that's what makes, after 26 years of doing this, ladies and gentlemen, that's what makes my learning approach and my teaching approach so much different and so much more so much better and comp more comprehensive than you find any place else. Everybody else confuses you. I want to make it simple. So we're going to go to File Save. And based on these choices, now, pay close attention here. The file must be saved in your root directory, the one that we defined in our previous video. So unlike Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign, let's say as an example, I wasn't paying attention and I was inside my other folder. Well, the advantage of what we did and set up a, a, a the, went to site, define site, new site, the advantage of that is Dreamweaver will keep track of your files for you. So if I click right down here based on these choices, if I click site root, that will take me right back to my site root. Pretty cool. Now, in my full video series on Udemy, I will share with you how to make the index homepage, but right now for all practical purposes, we're going to be in design mode, which means that we're going to build something for the client to OK. So let's assume for a second that the home page is already up on the client's website that says something like under development by you coming soon. Boom. That's the index page if you want to take a note on that. 
Now, one of the advantages of watching this on the Udemy.com platform is there's a little section in the top right-hand corner of any video that you watch that you can type in a little note to yourself. And also, you can basically instantly click a link that goes right to the instructor to ask a question about that particular video. So we're going to go ahead and call this page index version one. Now, if this was actually the home page, it would be called index or some servers default. So I'm just going to call this page index version one. Now, here's the most important thing you're going to learn before we do anything is to definitely 100% carve in stone title your document before you do anything else title the document. Now, how is that different from the file name? Well, the file name is still index underscore version one, but the title of the document is the information that A, appears in your web browser's title, but more importantly, it comes up in search engines. So as an example here, I'm gonna show you a really, uh, thing, a really important step of something not to do. Okay, so right now I'm in Google. And I'm going to simply do a very basic search for something called Untitled Document. Now, if I type in the word Untitled Document into my Dreamweaver, I'm sorry, into my Google search engine, you will see that 32.9 million people did not title their document. Now, the really frustrating part about that is that that person's website or that business website or that school's website is not going to come up in a search engine because they were lazy. They skipped the step. They did not title their document. Now, look at this high-end <laughs> Ivy League school, Dartmouth College, did not title their document. The irony to this is this is a page about probability. The probability of these clowns, and I will say clowns, good school, but hey, you didn't title the document. It's like, are you kidding me? That's bad news. It's never going to come up in a search engine. So you definitely want to get a habit of titling your document. To share with you how important that it is, I'm going to type in the word Dreamy for HTML classes. I'm on a gender. This is not a canned thing. This is not magic. I'm just going to type into Google Dreamy for HTML5 classes. Bingo. Now, again, this is not a trickery. This is 100% humble techniques of I know what the I'm doing. Okay, so as an example, all I did was type in Dreamy for HTML5, HTML5 classes into Google. Now, these guys technically don't count because they actually paid to be there. And I'm going to show you ways of basically making a lot of money with search engine optimization, not paying for it. These guys paid for it. These guys paid up to 6 or $7 a click to be here. But guess who's here first? This is my website here. This is one of my websites. This is my YouTube channel, the channel that you're watching right now. This is my Facebook page. Okay, so I am the first, first, second, third. Now, somehow this guy slipped into there, so that's not me, but this is me right here. Four, five, this is me, this is me. There's my Udemy website. Okay, so why am I there? Well, did I, did I pay off Google? Absolutely not. I never do. I don't spend money on SEO. So I'm going to share with you the techniques of how to get listed. Okay, so just by simply doing a Dreamweaver HTML5 classes or training or whatever you want to look up, this is me, this is me, this is me, this is me. So on the very first page of the Google search engine, I am the first four to five, six results. Now, if you don't think that's impressive, uh, you know, go, go ask that of your, of your local SEO guy or the guy you're trying to learn or the guy you're spending $50,000 to, to create SEO. I make a lot of money on, this, on, on the web because I know what I'm doing and I share those techniques with you my wonderful, motivated, dedicated students. All right, so let's go back into Dreamweaver and start building this site, and we'll do that in our next video.